specific that you would like to talk about? Okay, to start today's coaching call, we'll just talk about guerrilla marketing. So, welcome back, everybody. You can chat to me, any questions you have, you can just uh, let me know if there's anything specific you're hung up on, things you're thinking about, things you don't understand, things that are unclear, and uh, we'll go from there. One, two, let's see, one, two, wait. So this is the 12th week of the Flip That Contract program. Uh, first question is, has anyone done any deals? Anyone on this call got a deal they want to share or had uh, any successes or holdbacks? I know a couple of the students have actually put some houses under contract, uh, and a couple of them have some things working, but really and truly, at this point, you should really be sending off your second, first or second round of targeted mailers, and you should have <laughs> um, a general understanding of, of what your backyard is and you should have that backyard targeted. If you haven't been able to send out your mailers yet, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about some things you can do to get the ball rolling, so to speak. I'm going to open this up. You should all be able to see my screen. We're going to talk about Garland, Texas. Okay, as all of the students know, Garland's an area I actively target. And assuming that you haven't uh, really done any marketing and you're in your, your uh, still waiting for your phone to ring. I want to talk to you about some of the things you can do today that will get your phone to start ringing today. One of the easiest ways to uh, get your phone to ring is to conduct a guerrilla marketing campaign. To conduct a guerrilla marketing campaign, you really have to define an area. So we're going to say Garvin and we're even going to drill down a little bit more into this Miller, Shiloh, downtown Garland area. What you can do, let me expand this. Is you can actually go in and get some bandit signs. There's a couple places you can get uh, bandit signs. You can just start off with Googling bandit signs. Uh, yard sign wholesale, 100 signs, $100 same day. 100 bandit signs for $99. Uh, Banditsigns.com, five custom bandit signs for 25 bucks. There's all kinds of different places. You can even go to Walmart, Lowe's, Home Depot, and just buy the core class signs. Uh, I used to do a lot of bandit signs before I really got my direct mail marketing up and going. But say this is an area I was targeting. On a Friday afternoon, I would get my Google Voice number and just, I would, on, on a bandit sign, write cash for houses and then the phone number your Google Voice phone number that you're going to use for your buy calls. And you can take and put, let's see if I can get this drawing tool to work. You can take and put three or four here at this intersection, a couple here at this intersection, 
couple at this intersection, a couple over here, and a couple at these intersections. And if you were to do that, I can guarantee you that you're going to get phone calls. I always recommend you do it on a Friday afternoon because by Monday, code enforcement will pick up the signs. You really should try to go back and pick your signs up on Saturday, on, on Sunday, so that you're not burning through signs, but you don't necessarily have to. Now, my advice is to check with city code and make sure that you're in compliance. Uh, and that's all I'll say. So, you, you want to look at these high traffic roads, and you can even, let me turn this pin off, you can even zoom out. And if that's the area you're targeting, you can come down to here, to here, perhaps this intersection, this intersection, and you can cover that entire area with five or six well-placed bandit signs. You can also, this is something you can all do in front of your computer, just go to Craigslist, Housing, Apartment Housing, And this is housing for sale. You can go in here and find real estate. Here's real estate investor seeks apprentice, local investor seeks apprentice, private funding for real estate, looking to sell your house. You can go into this section and you can actually post a we buy houses ad, a cash for houses ad. And your phone will ring. You will get phone calls um, looking for uh, from people that are interested in selling their house. You can run a pay-per-click ad on Google. Uh, these are all just alternative ways that you can generate leads. Of course, I always recommend direct mail. Direct mail is the most tried and true true method of generating consistent leads in real estate. So this is something I have to do today. So since you guys aren't asking any questions, I'm going to go ahead and while we're on the call, get my... Uh, Go ahead and send out my October 1st mail uh, mailers. So I just drop in here to 2011-2012. Take my master spreadsheet. This is October, so it tells me here which areas I need to target. And now I'll just go, I haven't, this is the first time I'll have mailed this new list. So this will be called October, February, June. And I'll be mailing Rowlett, Richardson, Sunnyvale, Farmers Branch, and Carrollton. So... not doing Dallas. So I'll delete that sheet. Again, this is just a copy of it. We're not doing Garland. We're not doing Mesquite. Go back over here. Rowlett, Richardson, Sunnyvale Farmers Branch, and Carrollton. So that's everything else that I have left. We'll delete this owner-occupied tab. 
Now I've got the absentee owners. Now I just keep these as a separate tab. Here's Carrollton. Go ahead and drop these Carrollton absentee owners into the Carrollton tab. Tab down. Here's Farmer's Branch. Drop those over here into the Farmer's Branch tab. Did Garland last month. And Skeet is next month or the month after. So now we're Richardson. We're doing Rowlett. We want to actually separate this. Copy that into Richardson. Paste that in there. Go back over to absentee owners. Copy Rowlett. Sunnyvale on the bottom of, bottom of Sunnyvale. Yeah. So now I can get rid of the absentee owner tab. Again, that's just in this spreadsheet. Get rid of this tab. Let me create another tab. We call this sheet October, February, June. Now, all I do is just start copying over. So just did Carrollton, so now I'll delete the Carrollton tab. Grab hold of Farmer's Branch. Take out that header row. Branch in there now. Delete the farmer's branch tab. Get all the Richardson. Again, don't copy the header row. Delete the Richardson tab. Now I'm going to roll up. Copy 
got a lid over. Delete the roulette right tab. Copy all of Sunnyvale. Sunnyvale tab. And now that's 5,424 addresses. What I'll do is then go back and open the master sheet. 5424 is what it's supposed to be, so that tells me I got all the addresses I was supposed to. We'll save this spreadsheet. quick <coughs> scrub, delete all this extra data because the mail house doesn't need it. Now you have owner name, owner line 2, address, owner city, owner state, owner zip. Then I just save that. Go ahead and open up Microsoft Outlook. Create myself a new email. And no, here's the list for this month. I just bought this Microsoft Outlook program, so apparently I don't have it set up. in here. I guess I should have Dan's email address memorized, guys. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. Uh, that's what I thought it was. Mail today at AOL.com. Now, here's where it gets a bit tricky. I'm actually going to go in here to my Dropbox folder. Carriage Home, Big Leads, 2011-2012. There's the October list. And then, as I've taught you guys, I go right back into my probate folder and let's see. I add the July and the August. Insert those in. Jim gave me the wrong e email address. Mail them at AOL.com.
Then I've got July and August probate. I've got my October uh, zip code mailer. I hit send. And uh, <laughs> that's just how easy it is uh, when, when you've got your system in place. So now I just got to sit back and relax because by Monday my phone will be ringing, hopefully. Maybe Tuesday, maybe Wednesday, maybe not until the week after. It really doesn't matter because the entire premise of the flip that contract system is to teach you guys methods that you can utilize to be consistent. And uh, this is, again, about being consistent. So just check. It is indeed sent. And uh, let's see, mail. Now, why didn't that import? Hmm. Y'all got me confused now. So there we go. That's been sent. And hopefully I'll be in business. Any questions? Hey, there's a question. Yeah, let me, um, Eric, let me get in here to my other email system. I used to use Mozilla Firefox or Thunderbird and I finally bought the new version of Outlook. So Dan's email address is, well, this is the contact information for Dan Midkiff, M-I-D-K-I-F-F. His, his phone number is 214-748-0020. His fax number is on the screen. His email address is mailthem, M-A-I-L-T-H-E-M, at AOL.com. And I'm going to export this. Mozilla. Okay, so that's Dan's information. Let's see, you get another question. Best and worst number of contracts flipped for a given year. Mm, that's kind of tricky because it all depends on the individual and their goals. Uh, I would tell you to start off one a month is a is a good place to start. Uh, if you can average one a month in uh, if you can average one a month over a couple month period which you have to understand it could be zero for two months and three in the third month and that's the thing I'm really trying to drive home with you guys is if you'll commit to this and do this I mean your phone will ring 
and you got to answer it. And you just got to treat people like they called you and you're there to help. And that's very important. Uh, so I really can't say best and worse. I mean, best, <laughs> I guess best would be five or six a month for you guys, but you know, that's, uh, that's not a realistic goal. Uh, Betty asked, are you getting your targeted area list from your probate and absentee owner list? Uh, I, I, I use my probate list, but that's just the way I've told you before. I mail them a letter, then I mail them a, a postcard for two months in a row. Uh, the targeted zip code list you just saw me working on is directly downloaded from the Dallas Central Appraisal District. Uh, you can get that same list uh, from Foreclosure Listing Service. You can go to List Source. Uh, and very soon you'll get it directly from Platinum Direct in Carrollton. Uh, here you see the way I did my criteria is I mailed, let me sort this out because I had to narrow it down. You know, I started out trying to mail everything between 80 and 150 and 15 year deed date. Well, Sometimes you can't do that. I did everything in Garland from 65,000 to 135,000. And the deed date I used. was 1992, so that's almost 20 years. Uh, and I did that just to, to, to narrow down the amount of leads I was getting because I, again, wanted to be able to cover these areas. Uh, you can get that same criteria from Foreclosure Listing Service. You can get that criteria from uh, list source and very soon you can get it from Platinum Direct right now, but very soon we'll have to flip that contract web portal available where you'll be able to go in, put your criteria, and mail all with the push of a button. Any other questions? Lamont, did you get my answer? You're welcome, Betty. Okay, guys, there's a bunch of you on this call. Someone ought to have a question or something. I mean, you're not all pros, are you? You got me for another 28 minutes. No questions. Everybody's got this figured out. Okay. Uh, that's a very good question, Joe. Uh, Joe asked, if you need to slow down the title company, how do you do so? Uh, that's a difficult one. Uh, the, you know, the title company is a third party uh, entity and, and I tell you it was interesting today I had that exact problem Joe of uh, one of the inexperienced closers on a house on Pindar in Dallas that I am signing called called the seller and said hey we've got everything we need we're just waiting on Tim so what's the next phone number that she made phone call she made she called me uh, and she said well they said they're waiting on you and I said well that's news to me. Let me get let me give them a call and uh, I'll get back to you. So I called the title company 
and gave them a quick lecture about what were they doing. Uh, an inexperienced closer just uh, didn't know to call me first. Uh, she's only handling my files right now because my closer is out on bed rest. Uh, but the supervisor closer that I've known for 12 years is now handling my files. Uh, and, you know, it's just one of those things. Uh, that that is Joe. One of the reasons that uh, you can when you turn a contract in, you can say you can just make sure you iterate to them. You know, if there's no rush here. Um, there, there's really nothing you can do though once title's back. That's one of the reasons I tell you guys to write a 30-day contract, which is which is what I did on Pindar. I, I wrote a 30-day contract. So even though right now the seller is being told everything's ready, I told her I said, "Okay, well, great. Let me call the title company, get what I need, and I'll get the process rolled." Uh, I mean, we won't go beyond the close date, but. Uh, one of the things I'll tell the seller will be, you know, you're not the only house I'm buying right now, and I've got other deals working, and uh, I'll do my best to close before the uh, date on the contract, but we'll definitely close by the date on the contract, because when I look at it right now, I'm working, I don't even know, one two, three, four, five, six contracts that I'm working on getting assigned. Uh, well, then actually they're all assigned except for this one on Arrowhead. Uh, and let's see. Walden closes Monday at 2. Barchelon, we're waiting for some paperwork from the trust. Let Away, we're waiting for some airship affidavits. Pindar is the one I just told you is ready. Now, uh, my assistant hadn't filled this in. He's supposed to have the close dates in here. Uh, <laughs> you're not going to put on the repair bulldozer. Uh, and then Ivy Way, they're uh, getting a copy of a death certificate. Well, we're ready to go on all of these, uh, except Arrowhead, but I've got a little bit of time in Arrowhead. So it's one of those things uh, you just got to tell the title company, hey, no rush. Let's, you know, we're going to use. Uh, as much time as possible. Uh, who do I outsource refer my short sale leads to? It really depends on the area, Justin. Uh, if the house is in, you know, Garland, Mesquite, Rowlett, Richardson, I let my wife handle it, uh, and, and we just list it. Uh, it was a house that I thought someone needed to work on a short sale. Uh, you just really need to network. If you go to uh, the Roddy Roundup or any of the other investor clubs, you'll meet a whole host of people that want to work short sell leads. There's some bigger realtors in town that like to work them, I and you just need to form a relationship with them and uh, figure out which way is going to be best for you and your setup. Uh, if you refer it to a realtor that's just going to list it, that realtor is probably not going to be able to give you much of a referral fee. I think 50 bucks is the most allowed. Uh, you could get a gift card in the mail from that realtor, who knows, or maybe that realtor's husband. Uh, that's, you know, you got to be careful with that. Uh, whereas there's certain people out there that are, work the short sale as a principal and they can pay you whatever they want. So it, that's really a case dependent question, Justin. I hate to be vague. Anybody else? Come on. Ah, there we go. Uh, <laughs> Rustin, that, uh, let's see, the asking price is not necessarily always the sale price. Uh, this one's, yes, there's a $10,000 markup, but I've got to pay two realtors involved in the deal and uh, a person that brought me the deal. So, you know, this 10 turns into six real quick. 
uh, Birch line. I think I sold that for 67.5, so that's less than 10. Uh, this one sold it for 40, so that's less than five. This one sold it for 22.5, so that's a 4,500. Uh, this one, yeah, I got full price on that one, so uh, that's about 11. And then this one, uh, we're trying to make about 20 on it. It looks like it's probably going to sell for somewhere in the high 40s. So, yeah, you know, we'll probably make a 10 on it, uh, 10, 12, 15, something like that. Uh, okay, do you wait until you assign the contract, until you take everything to the title company, or do you take the contract to the title company as soon as you sign the sell? You take it as, you take it a, uh, you, you take it to the title company immediately. You, you don't want to uh, have that contract floating out there. You know, and that's why I tell you guys, you write a 30-day contract uh, and, you know, if, if you're not comfortable with the demand piece, if you don't think you're going to be able to sell it, you've got to build yourself an out. Then you just got to explain that out to the seller. Don't ever hide the out in the contract. My house is currently have pending. Did you have to go back and renegotiate with the seller? No, David, I've never renegotiated with the seller. And you shouldn't have to either. I mean, it, it, it's a sign that you've soaked in. Uh, a couple of the SOSs I've reviewed from some of the students that have made offers, I mean, they made their offers exactly where they needed to be. Uh, they're going to make two to five grand. Uh, the repairs may be a little high, but I'm telling you, if your repairs are high, your rehab could be low, your ARV could be uh, high as well, and then the two are going to equal out. But now I've never renegotiated with the seller, which means I probably don't get some houses, David, because I do offer low. Eric, no, I've never had to back out of a contract. Um, knock on wood. Um, at this phase in my career, I would not back out on the contract. And I have, uh, unless there's some sort of misrepresentation. Now, if the seller misrepresented something or hid something, concealed it, lied to me, then yeah, I would back out. But uh, I've never, I've never backed out. Uh, don't plan to ever. Uh, I've closed on houses that I, when I knew I was 400 square feet off on my original estimate and, you know, knew I was going to lose money going into it. But that's, again, as, a, as, as starting out, uh, I have written option contracts that I ended up terminating. And that's a hugely different thing. Uh, Joe Snow was with me uh, when we went and signed a contract on Candleberry and Mesquite, and that was an option contract. Because I'm telling you, I mean, I just did not feel comfortable with the resale value. Uh, I didn't feel comfortable with the repairs, and ultimately, I had offered 15 for the house, and the seller insisted on 22. Said that they could not take less than 22. If they couldn't get 22, they'd just let it sit there, and. Uh, I even I had a seven-day option, had one offer at twenty-one five. So of course I couldn't wholesale it for a minus five hundred dollar loss. So I called the seller and said, "Hey, you know we're going to have to terminate this option. It isn't going to work out uh, unless you can take nineteen. I, I was trying to make you know one or two grand and just move on. Well, he said no. He said, "But I'll tell you what. He said I'll give you another week if you need it." He said, "I got to get 22. I'll just let it sit there. If I, it's already an insult at 22." I said, "Okay." And I extended the option, and then just through some more marketing, I uh, got a guy out there finally that had been saying he was going to go out there for a while, and uh, he gave me 25. I was able to, you know, just wrangle out a three thousand dollar assignment and uh, turn lemons into lemonade. But yeah, I mean. It's one thing to back out on an on an option contract. I don't even consider that backing out. I just consider that exercising your option. The lead is listed under MLS. Don't we have to contact the agent before making the appointment? 
Mm, you don't have to. No, you don't. Uh, you mean someone, Betty, help me understand. You mean someone calls you and says, hey, my house is listed. Can you come look at it? Is that what you're referring to? Or are you talking about you drive through the neighborhood and you see the sign in the yard and you want to see the house? Okay, yeah, if they call you, you just tell them, look, you know, I can come out and look at it, but when I make my offer, it's going to have to go through your realtor. And because uh, some listing agreements, they may have the right to sell it themselves. Uh, the agent may not have the exclusive right. Uh, the contract may be expiring in a week. So I mean, you, you can go out, but the bottom line is if they have a valid listing agreement with an agent, you're, you need to submit that contract through the agent. How much money do you, do you give for the option? I, I gave that guy, I think it was 20 bucks. I actually think I still owe Joe that 20 bucks because I didn't have any cash in my pocket. Uh, was it 20 bucks, Joe? Yeah, 20 bucks. Okay. Okay, Rustin went on a Rustin Andrews went on a buy call with me the other day, and let's see, let's see if I can pull it up. I think I still have Rustin's email. Rustin, did you ever send me your SOS? I thought you did, but. Some reason I can't find it. Yeah, yeah, resend it to me real quick and we'll go over that. That's a good that's a good one. Uh, while Rustin's sending that to me, anybody else got any questions? Nobody. All right, Rustin's emailing me a uh, let me see an SOS on a house that he went with me to look at. I think it was last week, the week before, one or the other. Get confused. But just hang on, Rustin. Don't get ahead of me. All right, there we go. Okay. This is everything Rustin sent me. Here's the comps. These are leased comps. Here's the sold comps. Again, when you're reading these comps, it's very important to go through the description. And when you guys do the replay, you can slow this down. 
These are all the comps we used. Okay. So then he comes up with an SOS. Now, Rustin, do you have a microphone? No? <laughs> uh, yeah, why don't you call in real quick, and we'll talk through this with the group. It'll probably help everyone to hear the, uh, the point of view that you're coming from. So why don't you call in? Just let's see, Rustin Andrews. There he is, and I'll just watch. And whenever you, uh, when you chime in, when it shows me that you're on a phone, make sure you enter the audio pin. That way, I can unmute you. We'll talk to Rustin about what he was seeing here at the uh, at the property and observations, etc. Rustin is calling in. He's burning y'all's time up. Anybody got any questions while Rustin's trying to call in? Boy, for a bunch of newbies, you guys must have it all figured out. No questions for Tim. If you've got a private question, you can just tell me. Please don't say my name. I won't repeat it, uh, but I will ask your question. Uh, while we're waiting for Rustin to get all dialed in, go ahead and just kind of remind you guys that, you know, this Flip That Contract Portal, if you're a current student, this portal is going to be extended for you indefinitely. And I need you guys to try to post more questions. Uh, these are all from Bob Grissom, and I answered these via phone with him because he's one of the VIP students. But, uh, you know, I should have answered them here too. Uh, I would put my company website or none is what I would put on my business card. I'll go ahead and get uh, uh, That's the same. Okay. He already got that. And he asked that question twice, so we'll delete that question. Ah, it looks like Rustin's in. Yes, he is. <laughs> Where's the stinking audio pin? Ah, Rustin, you're unmuted. Can you hear me? Yeah, can you hear me? Hello, Tim? Hello, Rustin. Hello? Maybe you should unmute your phone. Y'all can hear it. But I can't. Oh, now I can. My speakers are turned on. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I guess I'm not a professional webinar host. Uh, I'm just, just an old real estate investor. Uh, all right, so I've got your SOS here on the screen. And why don't you let's see got it we don't know what we don't know at this point so questions are kind of yeah that's funny all right uh rustin why don't you walk everybody else through kind of the way it went at the house what you were thinking uh and do you have a breakdown of your erc on here or can i don't have a breakdown but i sent you an email um I can just tell you what it is. Okay. This one was a little difficult for me because the comps, there was a big difference in the comps. You know, it seemed like a couple of them were $100,000 um, apart from each other. So it was a little tricky. But 
the ERC I used for this, since it was pre-1955, I started at $14 a foot and then added $5 a foot for the roof because it had some wood shake shingles. And then I added $3 a foot for the foundation and then another two for plumbing. I don't know if I should have added two for plumbing. I know when we were there, you mentioned that it's going to need some, you know, plumbing work. Yeah. I don't know if that's already built into the foundation, the three dollars a foot for the foundation. No, it is not. Okay. So then that total would have been twenty-four dollars a foot. Twenty-four or twenty-five. Here, let's start back over. I'm going to add it up. You started at what because of the age? 14. Okay, 14. And then you added 5 for the roof because it's going to be a partial redeck. And all that's in the yep. what, and that's all, all that's in the what to offer webinar uh, module in FTC. And then you said you added, added 3 for foundation? Correct. And then how much for plumbing? 2. Okay, so we're at 24. Right. But when I used the four, it just seemed way too high, so I dialed it down to two. I wasn't sure if I was supposed to be using that one. Uh, you're talking about the four on the plumbing? Yeah. Okay. So I went to two because it just seemed like the ERC was a lot higher than what you used, I think, um, at the house. Yeah. So you actually came up with almost sixty-five thousand, and then dialed it back to sixty. Right. Okay. And do you remember what I offered at the house? One fifty. Okay. So even using these high numbers, right? And mm -hmm. even using, if you would have even used the extra two dollars a foot. It would have taken five grand off, and your offer would have been exactly what mine was. True. And I, I think that you might have thought it was worth two seventy-five, and I think I, I thought it was worth two seventy. So that was my difference there too. But yeah, I guess it ended up pretty close to, to what you offered. Yeah, and and I'm going to tell you, I mean, you know, you know, I told you I was going back out to sharpen my pencil. And I did, and I left my offer at 150 because I feel as if they're not going to call too many other people. And um, anybody got any questions for Rustin about kind of how he came up with things at the property and uh, et cetera? I'd love for him to be able to kind of answer some of your questions because that w that was the first time you'd been to a house with me, right? Right. Okay. I wasn't sure. Go back up. Go back up to the old prompts if you can. Yeah. This is why well, this one it was, seemed a little crazy to me because before I hadn't seen such a big difference. You know, these were similar houses in the same neighborhood and a couple of them are going when they're updated, a couple of them are going for, you know, two thirty four, two forty, and some three twenty, three thirty two. Yeah, you know, one of the challenges when you get in a, a neighborhood like this where the houses are so big is that dollar per square foot can be such a huge swing when you're talking about even five bucks a foot on you know 2,800 square feet, and so you look at this dollar per square foot, and you got 117, 111, 111, 116, 136, and so what I like to do on a house like this is I'll just go right back. Oops, I was tabbing on the wrong document. Is here you see, you know, it's got a tax value of 206. I'm actually filling in an SOS on my screen so that we can talk about it and change it. Uh, man, 
Hang on one second, everybody. Mm. Is this option going to be marketable to somebody who's looking at the ROI? And it's pretty low. Well, yeah, we're going to talk about that. So let me show you how I ran my numbers in my head, but I'll show you on paper. Okay, so here's another SOS, but Rustin's comps were, were, were good. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these top, bottom four. This 117, 111, 111, 116. So 111 plus 111 plus 116 plus 117 puts us right at about 113 bucks a foot. And that puts us right around 281. Now, we got to look at these square footages. And you got to do that because our subject property is 2488 square feet. Well, we've got a 2480 square foot house in these comps. It's a 422, just like our subject house. No pool. Two days on the market. Sold for 275, 111 bucks a foot. That's probably the most solid comp available. So, investors run their numbers different ways. And you've got to make buying decisions based off of what your consumer is going to use as a, uh, as a number. So, for my rehab, I'm thinking an investor can get that house done for about 50. Uh, and the reason I would go ahead and round down to that is because of just the, the marketability of the area. It's a great area. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah it was a nice area in Dallas. So, what? you know, even if we use your $22 a foot, you see the, the difference it makes. I mean, it lowers the offer to $149, based in, in essence, if I want to make $10,000. So, again, this isn't a science. It's an art. And arts are subjective and open to interpretation. So, if we go as conservative as possible, For an investor to make thirty-five thousand, if he go, if he budgets twenty and only can sell it for two seventy-five, uh, you know, I'm right on the nose as far as the most it can be sold for. Uh, but I, you felt like that was too high, right? The twenty-four bucks a foot. Yes. Well, I do too. <laughs> So, I wrote $5, not $5,000. So this is probably the best indication of what I was thinking. This screen right here. And then I just rounded up to 150 to make it a nice even 150. But, due to the amount of repairs needed and just the general condition of the house, I went ahead after the relook and just decided I was going to need, I was going to go ahead and stay at 150 so that I know I'll, I mean, I feel very, very comfortable that I can squeeze a minimum of three grand out of this assignment. And that was that, that, you know, that's my goal. Now, 
Am I going to try to get three grand? Heck no, I'm going to try to get 10. But it just depends on what the, uh, the market will tell me what the house is worth. You got anything else to add, Rustin? No, that's it. Thanks for explaining that, Tim. Appreciate yeah. it. All right, guys. Anybody else got any questions? Uh, I have not got it yet, Eric, but I'm following up with the estate trying and the uh, brothers and trying to get it nailed. No, Justin, I do not know how much a list source uh, subscription costs, but I can tell you that the list source, it, if you go through Platinum Direct, it's about five cents a record. But the problem is you got to buy the list every time you mail. Uh, if you're looking in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, Justin, you might as well just go ahead and email the Roddy, uh, email George and tell him what you're looking for. Thanks, Lamont. All right, guys, it is Friday. I'm out of here. It is time to go enjoy my weekend and coach my son play football and watch the Cowboys beat up on the Detroit Lions. So we'll talk to you soon. Have a great weekend. Good luck.